China claps back at human rights violation allegations. Okay, so by now, I'm sure you guys have heard about the confrontation that happened between Chinese ambassadors and U.S. government officials. Apparently, it was supposed to be like a quick, you know, like a quick little meeting, like a PR stunt to show, you know, the U.S. and China is working together after the bad years of Trump. We're going to start, you know, coming back to a degree of normalcy. But at that meeting... The two sides, the Chinese and the United States, they just, like, went at each other, like, went after each other on petty things, disagreements, calling each other out in front of the press. Absolutely hilarious. But now it looks like China is clapping back at the United States over some of the uh, human rights abuse allegations that the United States has put towards China, you know, about the the Uyghurs being oppressed, a a genocide going on in Xinjiang, claims about which are muddled at best. There's been a series of reports that have come out and look, I don't know, I haven't done the deep research. I've heard both sides of the argument. I've heard, you know, I've read some of the documentation about what's going on in Xinjiang, you know, and it sounds absolutely like a, like a huge condemnation, like terrible things happening there. But then on other sides of the argument from political thinkers and stuff, I've read that these allegations are being trumped up, that they're coming from U.S. imperialist think tanks. Anyway, that's a conversation for another time. Maybe we can, you know, get a thread going about it in the, in the, in the comment section. I do know that, look, China is by no means guiltless. We have seen the ways in which some of the workers are treated there. I've seen instances of Chinese workers being incredibly racist towards Kenyan railway workers. I mean, it's a discussion for another time. But what I wanted to touch on, for the most part here, is this memorandum that China sent out about U.S. human rights violations. And say what you want about China... (laughs) this really made me happy to see because whatever's going on in China, whatever happens in other countries around the world, right? America always tries to have this quote unquote city on a hill attitude. Like we're better than everyone else. As if we don't treat our workers like shit, as if it isn't a human rights violation, that healthcare isn't a right, that housing isn't a right in the United States. You know, America tries to have this holier-than-thou attitude with everybody in the whole world. Meanwhile, we're legitimately a fucking evil empire with 900 military bases around the world. We've committed huge atrocities. We're responsible for a million deaths in the Middle East over the last 20 years. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And, you know, nobody ever seems to go out swinging at the United States because, I mean, we're a giant empire with the biggest military on earth and so much economic power and the ability to do sanctions, et cetera, et cetera, that, you know, nobody ever puts their money where their mouth is and they just kind of let America pretend to be the big daddy that's better than everybody else. But China released this memo calling out a bunch of shit, a bunch of human rights violations by the United States. And I have the first page here, the foreword to the entire report. And I'll see if I can dig that up and drop it for you guys if you want to read the whole thing. From what I heard, it's pretty comprehensive and The Chinese really did call us out on our shit, and I personally love to see it. So I'm just going to run this down. Again, I'm sorry. I know a lot of times I'd like to just read straight from the thing for you. Maybe it's not professional, but whatever, man. I love this. It says, the report on human rights violations in the United States in 2020 from the State Council Information Office of the People's Republic of China, March 2021. This is the foreword. The very first... The very first (laughs) phrase in this is, quote-unquote, I can't breathe from George Floyd. (laughs) So before we even get into reading this, damn. Damn, and I'm not trying to laugh at George Floyd. I mean, you guys know where I've been on on the whole BLM struggle the last year, but damn China. Coming out swinging hard. Not even, no, no other forward, just that first fucking line, I can't breathe, George Floyd. So I'm just going to run this down here for you guys. Another quote here. The scenes at the U.S. Capitol building violence we have seen are the result of lies and more lies, of division and contempt for democracy, of hatred and rabble-rousing, even from the very highest levels. And that's a quote from German President Frank Walter Steinmeier. So just those first two just like quotes right away, you know, preambling it like a fucking novel, like, 
uh, for whom the bell tolls, where Hemingway has that poem in the beginning, just right away going for the jugular. Those two things right there, what happened at 1 6 and um, the killing of George Floyd and the mass killing of black Americans by police, right, right off the bat. You know, what are you going to say to that? What's the U.S. State Department going to say to that? <laughs> but yeah, they go on to call us out for the 500, the half a million people that die because of our poor response to COVID 19. In 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic wreaked havoc across the world, posing a major threat to human society. The virus respects no borders, nor does the epidemic distinguish between races. To defeat the epidemic requires mutual help, solidarity, and cooperation among all countries. However, the United States, which has always considered itself an exception and superior, saw its own epidemic situation go out of control, accompanied by political disorder, inter-ethnic conflicts, and social division. It further added to the human rights violations in the country the so-called, quote-unquote, city upon a hill and, quote-unquote, beacon of democracy. Coming out hard, China. Coming out hard. I got to hand it to you. I'm not trying to simp for China. But damn. (laughs) The epidemic went out of control and turned into a human tragedy due to the government's reckless response. By the end of February 2021, the United States, home to less than 5% of the world's population, accounted for more than a quarter of the world's confirmed COVID-19 cases. And nearly one-fifth of the global deaths from the disease. More than 500,000 Americans lost their lives due to the virus. Disorder in American democratic institutions led to political chaos, further tearing the fabric of society apart. Money-tainted politics distorted and suppressed public opinion, turning elections into a quote-unquote one-man show of the wealthy class, and people's confidence in the American democratic system dropped to the lowest level in 20 years. Amid increasing political polarization, hate politics evolved into a national plague, and and the capital was stormed in post-election riots. Ethnic minority groups suffered systemic racial discrimination and were in a difficult situation. People of color made up about one-third of all minors under the age of 18 in the U.S., but two-thirds of all the country's imprisoned minors. They ain't lying. They ain't lying. African Americans are three times as likely as whites to be infected with the coronavirus, twice as likely to die from COVID-19, and three times as likely to be killed by the police. One in four young Asian Americans has been the target of racial bullying. So that's just a little bit the forward here. Part of the forward here that I screenshot and wanted to read to you guys. And I won't bore you the rest of the details. If you want to read it, I'm sure I'll either drop the link. If I don't get around to it, you guys can Google it and find it yourself. Now, again, like I said, I'm not trying to simp for China. I know China has very little respect for, you know, what we would have here as First Amendment rights. You know, they are. But, you know, I want to touch on something, actually. China is called authoritarian and maybe they are i know that journalists like to disappear there on a permanent vacation unless that's somehow all propaganda media lies somehow i doubt it we've seen the things in tibet we've seen their stance on taiwan we have seen the crackdown in hong kong none of which i support china may be authoritarian but authoritarian Compared to who? Compared to the United States? Okay. What makes up what makes a country authoritarian? Mass surveillance? Pretty sure we have that. I think Edward Snowden is no longer living here because he said something about it and now our government wants to torture and kill his ass. Seems a little authoritarian to lock up whistleblowers, Julian Assange. Hmm. Authoritarian. What else is considered authoritarian? What, what else makes an authoritarian country? A police state? Militarized police? Hmm. I don't know, but what happened this summer seemed a little authoritarian. You know? 
black people coming out and peaceful protest, mind you. I don't want to hear none of the bullshit. It was peaceful until the police started shooting projectiles at, a peer, uh, at each other and, and using tear gas. Which, mind you, the United States is one of the only fucking countries that uses chemical agents on civilians during civil unrest. Let that, let that be known. But yeah, a, a massive police state, you know, people coming out and say, hey, uh, it would be great if you wouldn't kill us anymore. And they showed up in full armor looking like you know, some shit out of the fucking Hunger Games or George Orwell's 1984. You know, shooting projectiles, tear gas, blasting people with the um, audio weapons. Endless. That seems a little bit authoritarian to me. Oh, and if police, you know, kill somebody or hurt somebody pretty bad, because of qualified immunity, it's almost impossible to lock them up. So police that, you know, have no restraint and have no adherence to the laws of the land maybe a little authoritarian a war on drugs that locks people up for smoking a marijuana cigarette you know we got people doing life in prison because of drug arrests non-violent drug arrests mind you huh largest prison population in the history of mankind at least in the you know current state of the world largest prison population i think there's over a million inmates huh probably not authoritarian but there is the fact that you know companies like victoria's secret are using the prison inmates as dare we say slave labor paying them pennies on the dollar to work all day so that they can buy something from the from the commissary you know some ramen noodles that they can cook in their fucking toilet you know a million people locked up in a country of 330 million that's probably not authoritarian a country that spends 77 cents per tax dollar on military spending. A country that has 900 military bases all around the world, which, mind you, China has three? Three? I, I'm pretty sure it's three. Yeah. Authoritarian. Yeah, China's an authoritarian country. But the United States isn't. Uh, we're the, you know, the beacon of democracy, city on the hill. We have freedom here, and, you know... It's pretty upsetting that, you know, China doesn't like our freedoms. That's what this is about. And you better prepare for the ramp up of military spending, of Pentagon spending that's going to happen. Okay? Because China recently modernized their armed forces. And we already have generals in the Pacific region talking about we need more money and bombs and planes and shit. Oh, that's another fact I'd like to share with you guys. And forgive me, I'm rambling here. But I just love that China came and clapped out on our fucking hypocrisy here. Okay? But President Xi Jinping, I think he's been president for like eight years now, a little bit over eight years. If you had to guess, let's take a guess, drop a comment what you think the amount of bombs that the Chinese government under Xi Jinping has dropped in this year alone. Let's just say this year. Drop a comment before I go on with this and give you the answer. How many bombs do you think they dropped? Okay. What do you think? 100, 200... 300, 450? Like our government dropped last year? No, President Xi Jinping's administration dropped zero bombs. Zero. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, um, China's authoritarian and, you know, they hate our freedoms. That's what this is about. That's what this memo is about. They're talking shit. And to all my right wing boogaloo friends out there, you know, boogaloo boyfriends, we should be pissed. We should get out in the streets and do something about this. You know? Oh, yeah, I forgot you guys are already doing that, beating up fucking Asian people in the street. Yeah, because Asian Americans who have been here for, my guess, some of them three or four generations maybe even now, they're probably in bed with China. And that's why we have the coronavirus. So thank God you guys are out there protecting us. No, but for real, guys, I'm going to cut this video short. I, I just wanted to read you a little bit of this memo because it's fucking perfect. It's, again, say what you want about China. I know they're not fucking perfect, right? But America needs to hear this. It needs to be called out on its bullshit. And I hope more countries fucking do it, okay? All the other things aside in that article, the fact that we let half a million people die because our government didn't want to shut shit down and give us checks to live on. A half a million people, that's more people than died. That's more people died because of COVID-19 than the four years we were in World War II American GIs. That's more. 
in a fucking war because I didn't want to give us survival checks. Yeah. The bottom line is this country is a fucking shithole and I wish it wasn't the case. I would love to be proud of this country. I'd love to truly believe that we are the city on the hill, but we're just not. And you know what? Why we've been dropping bombs and letting people die of COVID-19 and we got somewhere between 500,000 and a million homeless people in the streets now. It's probably worse than that now because of all the, the rent crisis and the evictions that happened due to people not being able to work because of COVID-19. You know, while we were busy, you know, bailing out corporations, dropping bombs, making some white motherfuckers and ivory towers rich, Xi Jinping in the, China, uh, in the Chinese Communist Party, they eradicated extreme poverty. And that's just that's a whole other discussion for another time about why communism doesn't work. Capitalism good, communism bad. Anyway, guys, I'm I'm rambling here, uh, doing this a little bit different than usual. But I I just want to share that with you guys. Drop a comment what you think. I fucking love to see this memo. What do you guys think about it? What's your thoughts on China? I know they're not guiltless and all this. They're not blameless. They got problems of their own. But what do you think about this memo? Do you think it was a good thing to have America called out on the world stage? I personally think it was. Let me know what you think. But as always, guys, that's all I have for you. It's been great hanging out with you, and I'll speak with you again soon. Bye.